All right, welcome to Lighthouse Baptist Church. Let's all stand. We'll start with singing, I will serve thee. <clears throat> I will serve thee. Sing it out with me. Here we go. I will serve thee because I love thee. You have given life to me. I was nothing before you found me. <clears throat> you have given life to me. Heartaches, broken pieces, ruined lives are why you died on Calvary. Your touch was what I longed for. You have given life to <clears throat> Let's sing that again will serve thee because i love thee you have given life to me i was nothing before you found me you have given life to here we go sing it out with me heartaches broken pieces ruined lives are why you died on calvary your touch was what i longed for you have given life to amen in that good song <clears throat> your touch is what i long for praise the lord especially today amen well praise the lord let's go ahead and open up in a word of prayer and we'll begin dear Heavenly father god lord, we're so thankful lord to be in your house and father we want to ask lord our hearts our minds to be prepared Father, we ask you to help illuminate the word of God to us. We, we need you. We need the Holy Spirit of God. Lord, I pray there wouldn't be one that would hinder the Holy Spirit of God. Father, keep Satan out. Bind him from this building tonight. Father, we're excited to learn more about Revelations chapter 9. And we'll be careful to give you the praise and you the glory and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Does anybody have a praise tonight? Real quick, good to have everyone with us tonight. Amen. Through this holiday season, I tell you what, people, I'm telling you, holiday seasons make you tired. Amen. Too much spending or something. I mean, eating. <laughs> One of the two. Yeah, all of it. All of the above. Amen. Anybody have a testimony? Real quick. Miss Julia? Amen. Yeah. Amen. All time high for December. We had to set it this year. Amen. Remember they were saying this summer we were going to have a very cold winter. Amen. Now, I know my wife always says that, but the winters that Texas have last like two weeks. Amen. And uh, Wyoming, they suffer for eight months of real winter. Amen. We get we get two weeks. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Amen. That's hilarious. All right. Well, hey, I can't believe next Sunday will be the second, and uh, so that we have uh, uh, New Year's Eve as the thirty-first. That is on Friday, isn't it? Amen. But we'll still meet on Saturday at four o'clock. We'll be doing our prayer, and what a good way to start the New Year's, right? Uh, if you stay up late, I don't know anybody that can sleep till four in the afternoon. Seems like even if I go to bed late, I can't sleep past eight. So, uh, but anyways, we'll be here at four o'clock and we'll be praying the first day of the year and uh, just giving that to the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have a good time in fellowship. We do have uh, things coming up. Ladies are going to start their Bible study again, I believe, on the 
15th. That's a Saturday, and the ladies will meet here at 3 o'clock. And uh, they are going to be doing a Bible study together, all the ladies, every lady's invited. So that will start on the 15th of January. That's every Saturday at 3 o'clock. They meet back here, and uh, uh, they'll just have a good time. Amen. We still have prayer at 4. What will happen is the ladies will do their Bible study and then go right into prayer. Men will still meet here and go right into prayer at 4 o'clock, okay? And so, but praise the Lord, isn't it, isn't it good? Amen. So they'll go ahead and start that back up again. Amen. All right. I don't know if there's anything else I need to go over. Lots of birthdays. I just can't believe that. There's a lot of birthdays this month. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Did everybody get what they wanted for Christmas? I did. I got. I don't really care about those kind of gifts. The Lord gave me the perfect gift. I get eternal life. Amen. One day I get to see him. Won't that be good? All right, it would be great if he called us home. It would be good to do it right while we're studying Revelations and he could rapture us. But the best way to be raptured would be leading the last person to the Lord. Wouldn't that be neat? So let's all let's sing another song, Open My Eyes. What a good song to sing before we look in Revelations. Uh, open our eyes. <clears throat> sing it out with me. out and touch him and say that we love him open our ears Lord and help us to listen open our eyes Lord we want to see Jesus amen let's do that one more time don't pay attention to the piano, amen. <laughs> I'm teasing. Here we go. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. To reach out and touch him. And say that we love him. Open our ears, Lord. And help us to listen. Open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'll tell you what, we want him to open our eyes. We want him to open our ears, right? One thing we're good at doing is talking, right? One thing we're not good at doing is listening, and we really need to ask the Lord to help us to listen. Amen. Does everybody have their notes for Revelations chapter 9? All right. <laughs> I don't talk that much, yeah. Amen. Only when we get to church and we have other men to back us up, right? All right. Well, I want you to go back to the front page of your notes of chapter 9. And no, I'm not going all the way back. Actually, I want you to go back to uh, underneath Roman numeral 2, letter B. Now, you know these notes are Bible college notes, right? I let you know that. These are actually Bible college notes, and uh, these are actually uh, designed to prepare men and ladies to go into the ministry, okay? So you actually have actual copy of notes that you would get uh, if you're going to college to be a pastor or a missionary because they, get it, they have to know how to teach these things, all right? I don't know why they don't. But uh, they do have these notes. Anyways, there's, uh, there's something here that I went over that I went back and studied, and I don't agree with this man on, on this, okay? So I'm going to show you what I don't agree with, and then I'll, I'll explain why, all right? So when we get started, I'm not, uh, uh, I don't know why it was in my head. And as I went through and I began to study more and more, uh, we need to correct this before we go further because... Uh, it's not going to make any sense if we don't correct it now, all right? So B here is talking about, in verse number 1 of Revelations chapter 9, it's talking about the star that falls from heaven. And uh, the notes that we have, he says it's, the, uh, it's Satan, and his argument that it is Satan, and number 3 under, under B, is because of the fact that Lucifer's name means day star, 
And uh, that's basically his only uh, documenting proof that he shows there. But I went and done some more research, and I, this is very important uh, about this. And I want to read what I've, uh, what I've found, okay, according to that star that fell from heaven. And so if you'll listen, you can jot down some notes, but this is important, and we'll make reference back to this. Uh, but I think before we move on, uh, we've got to clarify this because this is very important to understand, all right? And so here's what uh, I found. At the sounding of the fifth trumpet, John saw a star fall, uh, and, uh, or as a revised version said, fallen from heaven. That it was not a literal star is clear. We already know that. We already agree with that. For the next verse, the star is spoken of as a person, he. And in the Old Testament, angels, we already know this because we went over this as well, that the angels were called stars, okay? So uh, God's made reference to angels as stars. Remember, we've already went over that numerous times. We know that uh, uh, script, one scripture is Job 38, 7, where he makes reference to angels as stars. Uh, but because the star was fallen from heaven, are you listening? Does not imply that the angel for that is what it was was a it was a fallen angel now some say it would have been satan himself as some have supposed that john simply meant that he saw a decent uh the decent of the star or an angel and so rapidly did it descend that it appeared to be falling uh, this is the same star angel. Now, I'm, I'm going to read this and then explain this to you, but re turn over to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. Now, this reference here in Revelation chapter 20 is the same angel. Look at verse number 1. It says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven. Is everyone there? I don't want to read before you're there. Okay, and it says, and I saw an angel come down from heaven having the what? The key of the bottomless pit and a what? A great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And did what? Cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up. How about that? That gets me excited. And set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Okay. And so let me ask you this. If that star that fell from heaven that was given the key to the bottomless pit was Satan. So you're going to tell me that that same angel that had the key has got the chain is going to bind himself and lock himself and seal himself in the bottomless pit so in all reality there's no way that that can be the case okay and so all I'm doing is he gave us a perspective and once I got to study a little bit more deeper into this chapter uh, that's wrong it can't be it I mean because Satan is not going to lock himself into the uh, he's just not going to do that okay and so that angel that God gives the key uh, he came down from heaven so fast he, of course uh, think how far heaven is Look like a falling star, amen? And so God sent one, another angel down from heaven, and that angel is the one who was given the key. And you say, why is that important? Well, you can see when we get to Revelation chapter 20 how important that's going to be because of the fact that that is not uh, Lucifer there. That is another angel that God gives that key to. And so this angel has the key of the bombless pit. He has a chain in his hand. He binds Satan. He casts him in the pit. That makes it clear that the star angel is not Satan. It's not Satan. Uh, these notes, and just because these are Bible college notes for an independent, fundamental, Baptist, King James believing colleges across the nation does not mean that those men, are you hearing me? That those men are God. If it doesn't co doesn't, uh, what? Cantonization is where scripture proves scripture. If it isn't proved scripturally, then it's not Bible. Okay? And so that's the thing about reading uh, notes. It's hard. It's really hard. And my wife goes, well, you're going to have to tell them that you taught them wrong. Well, no, this is a point of view. This is still a point of view that's being taught. I don't agree with that point of view. That makes absolutely no sense to me. Because God is not going to give Satan. Let me ask you this. We're in heaven right now at this time, right? In Revelation chapter 9. The church is in heaven, right? And uh, so why would Satan be up there? 
He's controlling the Antichrist. He's not in heaven. And why would God say, why would God say, oh, here you go, buddy. Here's a key. Go back down to earth. Satan is doing his thing down here, okay? God's not going to use Satan for his judgment. Amen. God's going to use one of his angels or one of his messengers, and he's, going to, and he's the one who opened. And I apologize that I didn't catch that before. I didn't catch that till I got further into chapter 9, and I had to make some references to chapter number 20. And, uh, but I wanted to catch that early, okay? And I apologize I didn't catch that, uh, but we caught it now. But make sure you make reference there that that is not Satan, that that is another angel. And, uh, but anyways, praise God for that. Amen. Now, I know that he does say... They do make reference to Revelations chapter 20. If you go back underneath 2 and go over to D, uh, they do make reference of that, but they still say on D, on underneath the key to the bottomless pit, they still say that the, by, by divine permission that God gave the key to Satan. That makes no sense, okay? So what he's saying right there is that Satan is going to lock, seal, and chain himself in the bottomless pit. That, that's not how it's going to go, okay? So you can go ahead. I wrote there on my notes. I made sure it's clear. This is not Satan. This is their opinion. Uh, just like they give references to other opinions, uh, we want to stick to the Word of God and what God's Word says. And I don't know about you, that's pretty clear it's not Him. Amen? Amen. Amen. It was very clear. I apologize. I didn't study it out a little bit more. All right. So let's uh, see. Where do we leave off here? We are actually on Roman numeral number three, and uh, you'll see, you'll see as we go through here why is it why was that so important to bring up? Well, you're going to find out why it was so important to bring up because of the fact that those things won't make sense as we get through them if we don't describe them correctly. So we're going to go ahead and start back over on Roman numeral three, and I want you to open your Bibles to Joel, chapter two. Remember, it's that small book. I know what you're going to do is you're going to start marking it. <laughs> Put a ribbon there uh, because it's, uh, it's a little sneaky guy, and he's right after Daniel and right before Amos. He likes to hide. He's one of the small books. All right, so are you there? Joel chapter 2, and let's, let's read this, and Joel 2, and we're going to look down from verse 1, and let's read down to verse number 11. All right, it says, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in mine holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand, a day of darkness and of gloominess. Now remember, what's he talking about? He's talking about the tribulation, okay? A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning stread upon the mountains, a great people and strong, there hath not been ever the like. Neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many ger generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. And the land as the Garden of Eden, who do you think that's talking about? It's talking about that demonic army that we're fixing to talk about. The flame burneth in the land as a Garden of Eden before them, and behind them as a desolate wilderness Yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them as appearance of what? There it is. They're describing the same thing we're getting ready to talk about. Uh, the appearance of horses and as horsemen, so shall they run. Now notice, like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devours the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face the people shall be much pained, and all the faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. Now notice, okay, this will take that their, the likeness that he's trying to give you a picture of about the horse and chariots. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. When's the last time you've seen a horse climb a, wheel, a wall? Okay. Remember, we're just giving a likeness. Uh, they shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall march every one on his ways, and they shall make not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. 
They shall walk every one in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, notice, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. When's the last time you see a horse do that? The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. The, the, and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is what? Very great. I, I, it just gives me chills, man. I think my hair just grew half inch. For he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very te terrible. Who can abide in it? Now, right now we're knee deep in the second part of the three and a half years uh, that's going on right now. We're knee deep in that. So it's not very long that God's going to come back and destroy this army that we're fixing to see. All right. And so this is very, very interesting. Love this. Amen. And so we are on Roman numeral number three, the description of the demonic locust. Now, we've already went over these notes, I believe. But I wanted you to hear a different uh, perspective. There are a number of things in this prophecy that we just read there in Joel that makes us doubt that the invasion of literal horsemen is meant. Now, I already went over this as we read it, but horses do not climb walls or climb upon roofs or enter windows like a thief. They do not fly in heaven's in which numbers are to darken the sun, moon, and stars, nor do they fall upon the sword and escape wounding. A horse doesn't do that. This could only be said of a spirit being. Amen. As demons. This prophecy looks more like a scourge of locusts, not literal locusts, but such scorpion locusts as John describes. For they attack men, and they cause them great pain that their faces turn black. This view is confirmed. Have you ever seen someone's face turn gray? I've never seen anybody's face turn black. I mean, they turn black when they die. I don't know that we've ever had that much fear, I reckon. This view is confirmed when we note the time of this horseman invasion. Joel tells us that it will be in the day of the Lord. We just read that. That it will be accompanied with the sound of the trumpet. Amen. Well, guess what? The Lord, it's going to be close for the Lord to come back when they come in. That it will precede the pouring out of the Holy Spirit on all flesh. And that it will be at the time when the Lord will show wonders in heavens and in earth, blood, fire, and pillars of smoke. I don't know about you, that just gives me chills, amen. And uh, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty scary. Uh, anyways, I thought that was a little bit more descriptive. I do want to say this. The, uh, the whole aspect or the whole thought of Satan and everything, uh, they are spirit beings. I'm not going to clarify that enough. They are spirit beings. And Lucifer can only be in one place at a time. Uh, he's the prince in the power of the air. He can go around, but he can only focus on one person at a time. Now, they do have powers, okay? Now, let me ask you this, and, and this is supposed to be like class. That's why I don't really like uh, live streaming, because I can't really get the participation of a class, which that's my, I'm praying about that. Pray about that with me. But anyways, uh, what is your thought about what do you think Satan's ultimate desire is? Now, when I say ultimate desire, there are things that we want, okay? And for you to understand what I mean by what his desire is, you've got to understand what yours are. I mean, the reason you work, right, and you want to increase your money, you have a desire and a goal to not be on welfare, right? Right? Uh, we have desires, uh, but that's not really the desire that he has. It's much stronger than that, okay, his desire. Now, we have people that have wrong desires just like Satan. And now these people that have these wrong desires, the world wants to call them they have diseases. When it's not a disease, it's a choice, okay? So 
that desire, whether they have an addiction because they won't stop taking pills or alcohol or smoking or chewing tobacco or no matter what it is, that is a desire that clutches you, okay? So what do you think Satan's desire is? I mean, I, I need to hear everyone's thought. What you think personally, what does Satan and his angels, what, what they fall from heaven for? We know they wants to be Jesus, but what is his desire to do now that he's here? He knows he's not going to get the throne, just so you know. He's not ignorant. Satan can quote the entire Bible in Hebrew and Greek. The one person that actually does know the Hebrew and Greek would be Lucifer. So I think he has a little more knowledge of the scriptures than we do. So what is his desire here? What, I mean, this is to stretch your mind. Help me, Brother Jim. His desire is to destroy you. Just like we have people that go to AA and all these other things, you know what they need is Jesus. They don't need AA. They don't need to come up and, can I help you? Let me give you some Bible. Amen. You're not, you are not the addiction that you have. If you're saved, you're a child of God. Amen. You've got power to break that bondage. The Bible says that, that some don't leave without prayer and fasting. The problem is we're too lazy to fast. Uh-oh, that hurts. Okay, so there are some cords of want, desire, and things that we've done in the flesh that require fasting. We just won't do it. Okay, so when we think of Satan's desire, he's not going to get right. Just like some of us won't do it either. That's our choice. Now, as your pastor, I wish everyone would get right. But we're just as stubborn as Satan. I mean, really. He isn't going to get right. And God already knows that. But his only desire, let me help you. I'm, I'm going to make this as clear as I can, is not sex. He doesn't care about cigarettes. He doesn't care about alcohol. He doesn't care about all the things. He don't care about money. He don't care about food. He, don't care. he doesn't have to eat. He's a spirit being. He's not given to sex. He could care less if a woman is pretty or not. He doesn't care. You want to know what he cares about? He cares about destroying you. You know what he's going to use? Things that he already knows that God said is wrong. You know why he uses sex? He uses sex because God said sex was for marriage. So he's going to make the world make sex good. Now it's so twisted that he, he wants to make where God says in Romans, where a man isn't alive with a man, good. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Amen. He's going to allow the church to say, well, we can't stand on that lest they... Chain the doors. Well, let them chain them. My, mom, my wife says, boy, you're getting kind of close on that. Well, you know what? I don't really care. It's not about race. It's not about all that. It's about God's word. I want you to understand what Satan's desire is. His desire for his privates, his demonic privates, that's what we have. We probably have the lowest of the low demons uh, attacking us because we couldn't handle anything else. I'm just being really honest, okay? Is to destroy you. You want what he wants to destroy you with? Tiredness. You want to know what he wants to destroy you with? Uh, sickness. You want to know what he wants to destroy you with? Arguments with your spouse. You want to know what he wants to destroy you with? Cigarettes. You want to know what he wants to destroy you with? Pornography. Boy, I don't want to preach that in church anymore. I think that pornography has probably went rampant through the church. You want to know what he wants to do? He don't care about that stuff. He doesn't care about sex. He's not a sexual being. You are. I get so sick of hearing a Pentecostal say that Satan came down and had sex with man. Satan never had them came down and had sex with man. He's not a sexual being. Go read your Bible. They aren't given in marriage. They don't procreate. They don't have sexual desires. Amen. Now, we can't understand that. Let me help you. We won't either when we get our new bodies. None will be given or taken in marriage anymore. We won't be sexual beings anymore. You say, well, I still love my wife. Well, so what? We will. 
The Bible says we'll still love them. We'll still have that same relationship. We'll still have that bond. But guess what? It'll be better because they'll know us who we are. We'll know them who they really are. There won't be any hiding. Amen? There won't be any anger, animosity, right? You say, well, that's my best friend over there. Hey, Paul, you have to wait a minute. I've got to talk to my wife. Well, she's not my wife now, but she was, right? <laughs> right? Amen. I just want to make that clear. Does everybody understand that? And, and let me help you with something else. We like to make a picture of Satan, but just so you know, he was the most beautiful creature that God created. Now, men think about women. That's natural. Women think about men. But they were made in God's image, which would be manly. But he would have been the most beautiful. And he was a musical instrument. Now, you put those two things together. Now, let me ask you, what do you think one of his key weapons is? Because we desire music. Oh, we've got to go to sleep with music. We've got to study with music. We've got to drive with music. Everywhere we go, we've got music on. We go to the store, they have different kinds of music on because you know what they want to do? They want to get you, keep you awake or keep you in the store longer, amen? They even got tricks where they put stuff so that you'll, you'll look longer, right? Did you know that's why they move stuff on different aisles? So I'd rather not shop. Now, you know what's cool? We go on the little app. We pick what we want. We don't let them switch it. If they don't have it, we don't get nothing. Guess what? That saves me a bunch. $5 to deliver, brother. That's worth it. Because guess what? They probably saved me $100 if I went because, I, oh, hey, that looks good. <laughs> that looks good, right? Amen. <clears throat> he was a musical instrument. What do you think we have so much problem with our young people in music? Man, I'll tell you what. The music that was popular our day is not popular today. It is a little bit, but the kids aren't listening to it. Have you listened to the, some of the lyrics or the beat? Yeah. What we used to call filth is actually clean now is what they say. Not according to God. I mean, it doesn't worship him. But, man, it sure is clean compared to what they're listening to today, my friend. But guess what? Who's in charge of that? He knows our wants and desires, and he knows that we desire music. We're musical beings. Just so you know. He is up on the times. Just so you know who we're dealing with. Letter C is where we're at. The king of the demons. Now, this is where it gets really good. C, let's, go, let's open our Bibles to Revelation chapter 9. I'm still in Joel. Revelation chapter 9. And we're, we need to read verse number 11 before we go over this. And actually, in all reality, there's so much here. Uh, look at Revelations chapter 9, verse number 11. It says, And they had a king over them, uh, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, uh, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Okay, now, there's two thoughts here, okay? Now, uh, uh, I did some more studying on this as well, because I figured if, if they're off on the, the first one, then they've got to be off on the second one. And uh, so, but anyways, there's two thoughts here. Now, uh, this could possibly, in uh, the king over them, it, notice the wording. It says, uh, which is the angel, how is it worded, of the bottomless pit. Now, uh, just, just, to so you, um, just to clarify, amen, uh, that Satan is not in the bottomless pit and cannot go to and from. The bottomless pit is a jail that you don't get to just say, oh, I'm, you know, no, if, if, guess when Satan goes there? That angel who gets the key is the one who locks him in there through the millennial reign. Then he gets loosened at the end of the thousand-year reigns. Well, he's not in the pit. He will be in the pit. Well, they are saying that he's the king. Uh, I've, now, these are just two thoughts, okay? I'm not, I'm not saying I don't have any idea, uh, but it could be either Satan or it could be another angel who is over the uh, bombless pit. This would be another uh, uh, king that would have been from the pit. So just two thoughts there just so that I give out both of the thoughts. The two thoughts are one is that it's Satan, which that's what they say. The other thought is, is that they have a king that's in the bottomless pit that's released when the angel that God sends down with the key opens it. 
two thoughts there, all right? So let's go over this. Uh, his opinion is the identity of the king. This verse tells us the king is the angel of the pit, a reference to the fallen star. That's what he thinks. And uh, the blank is Satan. Number one under C. Oh, there's not. I must have just underlined that. Okay. I must have accidentally underlined that while I was going over this. But uh, just so you know, Larkin disagrees with him. So, I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's Larkin or these guys. It doesn't really make a difference. Uh, in my opinion, it doesn't matter which one it is. No, it doesn't. And uh, it really doesn't, does it? But I wanted you to know that there are two thoughts there, all right? The name of the king was Abaddon, which we already went over, and Apollyon. Uh, that's the Hebrew and the Greek word, both meaning, uh, these words mean the destroyer. Now, I did do some studies on that as well, where Larkin said that the Bible never made reference to uh, Lucifer or Satan as of these Greek and Hebrew names. But I, I went and did some research, and, and he was called the destroyer. Uh, the Word of God does call him the destroyer. And so, uh, see what I mean? Uh, it, they're men, okay? When you study the Word of God, you always got to go back to the Bible, okay? Satan was referred to as the destroyer. He was, okay? Uh, so he was wrong there. So see what I'm saying? you got to be careful who you read, no matter how good they are or how accurate they are. Always know the rule is the Word of God, okay? And so you say, well, Pastor, who do you think it is? Well, I, I'm kind of leaning that it is Satan because of the fact that he is called the destroyer, and he will be an angel of the pit. Amen. Why? Because that's where he's going all right, so there, now you have the two thoughts there, all right? The wording, uh, the word says that is the angel of the bottomless pit, amen. Now, notice whenever God will refer to Satan, he does refer to him as who he's going to be. So that makes sense too, right? I'm trying to help you with the, the thinking, all right? So if you look at the word of God and the Lord is writing this, and if he's making reference to Satan, it's right on. It's spot on because Satan is going to be an angel of the bottomless pit, right? Now, only for a thousand years. After the millennial, he'll be loose for a time. Then he'll go to the lake of fire, not the bottomless pit, with everyone else that chooses to go against God, all right? So the bottomless pit will be done away with after the millennial reign. All right, let's go to D. Two, uh, are there blanks there? Yeah, these are blanks. Oh, both of these words mean destroyer. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, destroyer. Oh, Satan. Okay. These are so some of the many names and titles given to Satan. So here, this at this point, these notes I agree with, and I believe that Satan is obviously possibly going to be the, the king, but you do have to offer up two of the different interpretations. Uh, that would be the correct way to teach this class. Amen. Uh, but I am also going to give you what I think. All right. I, I lean more towards Satan being the king of those. He's the God of this world. He's leading the revolt. It would make no sense to have another king come out of the bottomless pit. Okay. Because then you've got two leaders and one's going to have to destroy the other. That's not going to be the case. Amen. All right. So here, D, the first woe, in verse number uh, 12, chapter 9. It says, One woe is past. And behold, there come two woes more hereafter. Now remember, we talked about those woes. And the, that woe means an exclamation of grief. A, a terrible, terrible time. And remember in Revelation chapter 8, the last verse, that angel said, woe, woe, woe. Talking about the last three trumpets, the fifth, sixth, and seventh. Talking about how terrible they were going to be. And so that was the, this is the end of the first uh, woe. Uh, the fifth trumpet is the first woe. The, 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 uh, the fifth trumpet was when Satan, or not Satan, but the angel was, uh, was given the key. I have to reword all this now. They call him the star angel. The one who was given the key to the pit. 
the one who binds Satan. Amen. Now, if, if Jesus was going to be the one who bound Satan, it would have, it would have named him as such. But it's not, it's not Jesus who does it. It's, a, it's, a, it's the same star angel that opens up the bombless pit. All right. So we are in uh, Roman numeral number four. This is the sounding of the sixth trumpet. So let's go ahead and uh, what we'll do is we'll read 13 to 15 and then we'll stop because I don't know if we'll get that far. But let's go ahead and look at our Bible. Look at verse number 13. It says, And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose, now pay attention to the wording, okay, loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of man. So let's go ahead and we're going to, uh, I want to, uh, let me see here. I want to read some notes to you. Uh, let's see here. I just want to make sure before we go any further. I want to read this before we go any further. Listen to this. This is amazing. The scorpion locusts have a king. Now we're talking about the locusts who come out of the bombless pit, which ordinary locusts don't have. In Proverbs 30, verse 27, it says they don't have a king. This king's name in Hebrew, Abaddon, but in Greek is Apollyon. Now, Satan, nowhere, this, this is where he agrees with that. I don't agree with him. The meaning of, then, this scourge of scorpion uh, locusts seems to be that an angel, the custodian of the pit, will open the bottomless pit and liberate the vast multitude of demons who shall enter uh, and take possession of the bodies of men and to so torment them that they shall desire to die and shall not be able to die those will be awful days in which to live and remember they're going to try to kill themselves they won't be able to die and especially for those who have the mark of the beast who will be the special mark now this is this is what he thinks and remember i'm just giving you some opinions because this is some deep stuff okay uh, a mark of those scorpion locusts. They will be invisible to the natural eye, being spirit beings, but their presence will be known by the suffering they inflict, which will be uh, unavoidable. Now, we do know that spirit beings can be right in front of you and you cannot see them. We've seen that in the scriptures, and we're going to go to some of those here later as we go. Uh, I remember when Elijah prayed and asked God to open their eyes so that they could see the army. And when God opened their eyes, they see an army of chariots. Amen? That's not the only time. I remember when the, uh, uh, the, the prophet was on the donkey. He didn't see the angel of God. And he wondered why his donkey wouldn't go forward. Well, the donkey saw the spirit being, but the prophet of God the wicked one, did not. Amen. Until what? Until his eyes were opened, okay? So spirit beings can be seen or they can be invisible. That's scary, isn't it? Can do what they want. So let me help you. Can, can a demon be on you? Yes, they can. They can walk right beside you. You know what? They can whisper in your ear they know what you like they know how to put you in a bad mood so don't say there's no demonic out there trying to attack you yes and they're little tormentors they're gonna be able to do whatever they want here amen but anyways let's let's go on that's that's some that's some Whew, I'm glad I'm being heaven. I'm not going to be looking down either. I'm going to be with everybody else looking up, up there in heaven. All right, so number four, the sounding of the sixth trumpet. A, the voice uh, from the altar in verse number 13. Uh, a further reminder that in part of these judgments, answer. 
is your blank. The prayer of the saints. <clears throat> now why would this be the answer? Well, remember, I want you to understand something because we have a misconception of really what's going on down here as well. Men hate God. They do. It's worse then than it's bad now. It's real bad. Because it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything to use the Lord's name in vain anymore. It doesn't mean a thing. It doesn't bother them a bit. I remember when lost people were afraid to break into a church house because they thought God would strike them dead. Not today. They could care less. And they'll kill somebody right in your church house. We've seen that just down the road. They don't care. They're pretty wicked. It's worse. The Bible says, and we've already seen this, that they look up and they see the Lord and they blaspheme Him to His face. Knowing that God is still calling to them. Just like Pharaoh. God gave Pharaoh chance after chance after chance. And he kept saying that. I know that the God of Israel is the true God. He knew. He knew. And God was long suffering. And finally he hardened his heart for the last time. And God said fine. Your heart will never be unhardened. The Lord is long-suffering, and He's being long-suffering here. But I want you to understand something. I know it's a wicked time, but you've got to remember, it's a wicked people that need to be destroyed. They're opposing God. They're enemies with God. They're spitting in God's face. It's a wicked, wicked time. All right, so let's talk about verse number 14 uh, in Revelations there. The four bound Angels, the four bound angels. The fact that these four angels were bound at the Euphrates, where Satan, now this is interesting, where Satan's seat was, in, now these aren't in your notes, this is extra stuff that I studied, where Satan's seat was in an ancient times, where it is at the, uh, where, it, where it is to begin at the city of Babylon. Uh, restored and from whence he sailed forth to do his diabolical work makes it clear that this army is a part of Satan's force. Now these uh, four angels you can write this down there underneath B that these four angels are bound. Now notice when the pit is opened they can't come out. Well they're bound you say, well, it doesn't matter. Well, they're not just bound, able to go wherever they want. Usually when you're bound in jail, you're bound to something, right? Okay? You know that when you go in to see a real bad prisoner, they usually cuff them to the table, right? Well, they're probably chained to something down there. You say, how in the world do you? Well, they got spirit chains, I guess. Don't ask me. Ask the Lord. But he says they're bound with chains, right? And so they're bound, okay? And the, even though the pit's been open, they're still stuck in there until God allows them to be loosed, right? Now, they're loosed in a specific location. And we just talked about where them. It's pretty ironic in the east. Isn't that funny? No, that's not funny. Amen. Now, I want you to understand, these would be the four commanders or generals or uh, uh, leaders of Lucifer's demonic army. Now, I, I'm, trying, I'm, I'm trying not to go ahead of myself here, but that army is not by men. Men did not fly out of the bottomless pit. Demons, and which are fallen angels, did. Okay? So I, now I'm going to be honest. I've heard this taught, and uh, I didn't know any better. And they taught about how this is the world armies, which we're going to go over that here in these notes. Uh, but this, we're not talking about a world army. We're talking about a demonic force. There's no world army in the pit. Amen. All right, so let's go on. Uh, these are the four leaders. Since these angels are bound, it would seem they also belong to a group of fallen, that's your blank, fallen angels. I even wrote by right this, so that's to say that when the pit was opened, those that were bound were still not released. That's clear. Amen. So just because you, they opened the bars of your jail and you're chained to the floor doesn't mean you can come out. Amen. Even Paul and Silas, when the jail, the jail doors were opened, said their chains fell off. So that would actually be typical of old time. When they put you in jail, they chained you to the floor. 
Amen? All right, so look on C. Loosing of the bond, uh, the bound angels of uh, verse number 14 and 15. Uh, loosed in the river Euphrates. There are a number of suggestions as to why these angels were set loose in this particular location. And he's going to give you different uh, thoughts here, just so you know. It was in this area, which we just talked about, that Satan's work on earth began. In the east. Genesis chapter 2, 10, 14, and 3, 1. That's when Satan's, guess what? That's when, when did he start? He started on Eve, didn't he? Sure did, amen. Notice he had to wait until after Eve was made, Brother Jim. Blame it on our women. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, hey, I'm going to be honest with you. The reason why women uh, were deceived is because the man didn't stand. The man knowingly sat there and watched Eve eat it. No, I'm not one of these preachers who's going to blame it all on the wife. It wasn't the wife's fault. It wasn't Eve's fault. It was Adam's. He sat there and watched her take it and ate of himself. That's a typical man saying, I'm not going to fight with my wife. If that's what she wants to do, we're going to do it. No, men, you need to pull up your pants, and you need to make sure that you line up with God's word. And you say, this is what God's word says, and this is what we're going to do. The Bible says that Adam knowingly partook. Shame on him. Men, shame on us. It's not shame on our wives for doing wrong. It's shame on us. We're the ones who know. Women are de can be deceived. The Bible says that. That's why they aren't to be leaders. Men are not uh, deceivable, aren't deceived. We knowingly sin. We do it with our eyes open. Uh-oh. Boy, that'll preach. You say, well, how's that? Well, the Bible made it clear. So here we see that the, uh, it was in the area that Satan's work where it began. Amen. So that's where his generals were put, brought. B, it was in this area that the first organized satanic revolt took place. Let's look at that, Genesis 11. You know what the revolt is. You should. Look at verse number 1. It's, and the whole earth was uh, uh, one language and of one speech, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found the plain and the land of Shemar. Uh, let me make sure I'm in the right place here. I am not. I believe I am. Okay, all right. Well, I, I uh, spaced out a little bit there for a minute. That they, the plain of uh, Shinar, and they dwelt there, and they said one to another, Go to, uh, go to let us make brick and burn uh, them thoroughly. And they had a brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. That's so dumb. And let us make us a name, and let us let we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. Can you imagine the Lord's frustration? And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is it the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did uh, there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them and brought the face of the earth. So what was the Lord's commandment to them? What did God command them to do? They were supposed to go into all the earth? Yes, they were supposed to scatter and procreate through all the earth. The earth was given to them, and they didn't. Instead of doing what God told them, they were going to build cities and a tower that would reach into heaven, which is the silliest thing. Well, wait a minute, we do the same thing. Right? Okay, so it was an area of the first organized satanic revolt. They revolted against what God told them to do. See, the Euphrates is one of the borders of the promised land. Hmm. The Euphrates is one of the borders of the promised land. That's your blank. Promised land. <coughs> D, the book of Revelation predicts an invasion, an invasion, that's your blank, from the what? East, huh, it makes a lot of sense that the commanders or generals would be put to the east. 
Revelation 16 and verse number 12. Revelation 16 and verse number 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. And the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Amen. Revelation 16, 12. It may, be well, uh, may, may well be the events here are part of what will happen. We know from Daniel chapter 10 and verse 13 that behind the nations are, are spirit beings called princes. Amen. They got four commanding generals, and we're going to talk about how many angels came out of the uh, pit here in just a minute. Uh, number two, well, I've got four minutes. Uh, number two, uh, loosed according to the divine plan. These angels, these four bound angels, were loosed according to God's divine plan. These angels were prepared. Uh, Jude 6 says, They and others are reserved in chains unto the judgment of the great day. Isn't that interesting? These, these four commanders or generals have been chained and put in a bottomless pit. And they've been sitting there waiting even before you were born. Amen. God's had them there for a long time. Number three, they're loosed for 391 days. 391 days is how long they're loosed. Number four, they're loosed to slay men. Remember, their desire is nothing other than to destroy you and I. They already know they're not going to heaven. They want to destroy God's creation. They're going to be pretty wicked. So they're going to be loosed and they'll slay men. All right, well, we're going to have to stop there. Let me see we got how much time do we got? We got five minutes. Let's go ahead and get into this. All right, uh, uh, look at verse number 16. <clears throat> It says, and the number of the army of the horsemen were what? 200,000,000, and I heard the number of them. Now, 200,000,000, have you ever uh, heard of that number before? 200,000,000, amen? Right? I think I told somebody already, I always cheat like that. Amen? 200,000,000, how many do you think that is? It says it right on your book, D, 200 million. 200 million. There are two interpretations of this, and I agree with the first. Um, number one, it's a supernatural army of the hellish friends, okay? Uh, much like the demonic locust creatures from the bombless pit, some see, mighty, the, some see this mighty army as uh, purely demonic, an interpretation which would not necessarily violate Scripture. Uh, description of the horse supports this interpretation, but you know what? I don't agree with that. I, I agree that there, there's, there's going to be 200 mi Think about this. Uh, he sees, uh, when they open the bombless pit, John sees them come out. And what does he describe them as? Remember, he says it was like. Now, he had seen, he had seen swarms. Okay, so the only thing he could compare the swarming of them, ang or them angels coming out of the pit to would be what? Those are disgusting. I, I've, I've seen a little bit of swarms, but I don't ever want to be around those swarms. Those are nasty bugs, man. I mean, I don't even like, what are those called, cicadas? Now, those things, sick, those things are sickening, aren't they? Wow. Now, yeah, you think they're cool. They make some loud noises, amen? Uh, but anyways, uh, so praise the Lord. 200 million. So a thousand thousands is, is uh, 200 million, amen? Isn't that interesting how they say it in the Bible? All right. Number two, uh, the second thought is that it is a Satan-inspired invasion of earthly armies. And uh, this is interesting because others see this army as human and description of horses perhaps as a... Now, you know what? Uh, those Just, just for thought, uh, those uh, commanders that are put in the east, uh, demonic, it's not like they would not be able to uh, employ some demonic... Uh, uh, People, isn't that what they, their desire is to destroy man. 
They want to possess man and destroy him. They do. I mean, they're spirit beings. They can possess a lost person. They can literally reside inside the body. Now, think about this for just a minute. We know the man that, was, uh, uh, that, would, that couldn't bind, uh, that had a legion. He didn't just have one demonic spirit in him. That's scary. Well, you know what? If you're saved, none can come in you. So all they can do is oppress you. Now, they, they, I did type out the population and how big their armies are, just so you can get a gist of uh, how, how big they are. But China's standing army there, you see, if you look all the way down through there, and it'll show you all of the, now these wicked nations. Amen. <laughs> uh, none of these nations are Christian. Many of them are Islamic, and most oppose Israel. They oppose our God. Uh, Muslims are very, uh, they don't believe in the same God. Their God is not like our God. Uh, Allah is the God of, uh, he destroys, he doesn't love. Amen. And uh, just so you know, Muslims' Quran does state that uh, to kill Christians, to kill you. Amen. Uh, God never wanted to kill anybody. Our God loves the whole world. He wants all to be saved. Amen. Uh, not Allah. All is the opposite, okay? Let me help you. All is not God. There is no such thing. That's like worshiping sand that God created. It's absolutely nonsense. So, you know what's sad? Is they're devoted to worship nonsense when we worship the true God and we can't even be as faithful as them. That's a shame. We say we worship the true God. They say they worship the true God, but they're worshiping Satan, and yet they will be faithful every day at special time with a special rug and face a special way and pray a certain long length of time every day no matter where they're at and the child of God that serves a risen savior can't pray once a day that's a shame that's a shame and our God's long suffering isn't he uh, as early as 1965 communist China boosted it could yield uh, could field an army of 150 million within a short while. Korea has a reserve force of 4.5 million men. They probably have more today because this was written a while ago. It is interesting to consider in Daniel 11:44 in light of these facts. Amen. We do know those armies come from the east, and it's not ironic that those commanders are placed in the east. Where do you think, let me ask you this. You say, well, why would they be placed in the east, away from the bombless pit? Well, remember, we're talking about spirit beings. Does it really matter? That, I mean, a spirit being can go to and fro in the air, just so you know. And, and we can't see them. They don't want us to. Okay? Kind of like Bigfoot. Funny how all of a sudden we see a Bigfoot. And then we don't see a Bigfoot. You know, let me help you. I believe that's demonic too. Because anything to get your mind and study off of God. They know. They know who wants to look for buried treasures on islands and spend vast millions of dollars and never one time think about their soul. Are you with me? They know of a lot of people that will go search for Bigfoot. You know, there's people that that is the most important thing in their life. I remember when, uh, and, and Elvis is dead, by the way. I remember there's people that were still saying that Elvis never died. And they, they were just, that was their main, that, that consumed them. How many remember that? Come on now, don't you lie. Oh, my word. They are more worried about Elvis than Jesus. Hmm. That's demonic. Guess what? Those little flying saucers weren't flying saucers. Prince of the power of the air. And they can do all kinds of lights. They can do that to your camera. Why, why are we so... Uh, do you stop being enamored by the demonic and get more enamored by God's word? Because guess what? When God comes to town, they're all going to the lake of fire. Their work will be done. Quit wondering about evil. Why don't you start wondering and giving awe to where awe should be given to God Almighty. We'll start back on the E. We're going to talk about the description of the horsemen. 
very interesting. It doesn't get bad from here. I'm just being, being honest. It doesn't get, none of this is bad, okay? So I hope that you'll stay tuned. I, man, I tell you, uh, I sure wish more people would come uh, because they don't know what they're missing. It's a, just a shame. It's a sad day that we're living in. Amen? It just is. I mean, look around. It just is. It's discouraging, but we got to keep our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ, know what we're doing it for. Don't let Satan get you to stop, okay? We know who he is. We know what he attacks. And guess what? If you didn't know by tonight that his desire is to make you not do what you're supposed to do, right? He gives us an excuse. Huh? Guess what? Sunday morning, what's going to happen? Guess what? Saturday at 4 o'clock or at yeah, 4 o'clock prayer, guess what? You're not going to feel like coming. That's, guess what? God wants you to be here. Every time we assemble, He wants you to assemble. He wants you to pray. Amen. Amen. No, that's a demonic attack. Let's all stand. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we're so thankful for the Word of God. And Father, we're thankful, Lord, that you've uh, given it to us and shown us these things and revealed them to us. And Lord, it is eye-opening. And Lord, I know that it helps me to understand some of the things that are going on today. And Lord, it helps us to understand that all these things that are going on are like smoke screens to get our eyes off of you. Father, I pray, Lord, that you've opened our eyes and shown us. Lord, we can't be looking around at all that stuff. we got work to do. Father, it's close. It's close. Uh, uh, Lord, we know that you're getting ready to get up on that cloud and call us home. And Father, I, the thing that saddens me, Lord, and I hope it saddens everyone in here, is that there's people that don't know Jesus Christ. And it's our responsibility to tell them. And Father, I pray we'd get our focus where it needs to be. And Father, quit looking at all the demonic things that are happening. We know they're happening to stop us. Father, help us to be alert, be aware. Father, we love you. Lord, we ask you to go with each and every one of us. Put your hand on our bodies. Lord, we know we're weak. And Father, give us the rest that we need. Bring us back again on Saturday for prayer and on Sunday morning, charged and ready to go. Lord, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed.